For over 70 years, nuclear weapons have shaped the cultural consciousness of people all over the world. The threat of nuclear war has waxed and waned over time, but it still casts a shadow on the decisions of leaders across the planet. How were nuclear weapons developed? And how did they become such a deterrent to large-scale international conflict? This is the history of nuclear weapons. The underlying physics behind nuclear weapons was developed in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In 1898, Marie Curie discovered the radioactive element radium inside an ore of uranium. The British physicist Ernest Rutherford realized in 1902 that radioactivity was due to atomic decay as one element was transformed into another. Scientists and authors began to speculate about a future with free, unlimited energy. Further advances in nuclear research did not occur until the 1930s. The appointment of Adolf Hitler as German Chancellor led many Jewish scientists to flee to the United Kingdom and United States, where they would prove instrumental in the development of the atomic bomb. The start of World War II in 1939 raised concerns on both sides that nuclear weapons had the potential to rewrite the methods of warfare. Albert Einstein signed a letter to US President Franklin Roosevelt and persuaded him to set up the Uranium Committee to research nuclear physics. Funding for the project increased dramatically after the US joined World War II in 1941 and this eventually paved the way for the Manhattan Project in 1942. Across the Atlantic Ocean, the UK's Tube Alloys Project had a similar mission. However, it fell behind the American effort as the war dragged on, and in 1943, the British initiative was combined into the Manhattan Project. The project was led by J. Robert Oppenheimer, widely considered to be the father of the atomic bomb. The Manhattan Project was a massive enterprise that took advantage of the scale of the U.S. economy, with 30 facilities spread across both the United States and Canada. The primary goal was the development of a fission bomb, in which an atomic nucleus splits into two smaller nuclei. The main isotopes used for starting the chain reaction are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. In July of 1945, the U.S. successfully performed the world's first nuclear test. In August of 1945, the uranium-based Little Boy and the plutonium-based Fat Man were used on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Shortly after, Japan surrendered, ending World War II. The post-war era led to the Soviet Union accelerating its nuclear research under the leadership of physicist Igor Kurchatov. While the USSR had received intelligence on the Manhattan Project from its operatives during the war, the Soviet nuclear program did not enjoy sufficient funding until 1946. The first successful Soviet atomic test took place in 1949, marking the start of a nuclear arms race between the two superpowers. In 1952, the U.S. tested its first hydrogen bomb, which relied on nuclear fusion to release a much larger amount of energy. Fusion weapons work by combining two atomic nuclei to form a larger element. Isotopes of hydrogen such as deuterium and tritium are usually involved in a chain reaction to produce helium. In 1953, the USSR tested its first fusion bomb, as it sought to keep up with its arch rival. The United Kingdom also developed its first fission weapon in 1952, and its first fusion bomb in 1957. Throughout the rest of the 1950s and 1960s, both the US and USSR built up their nuclear stockpiles. Both nations also developed intercontinental ballistic missiles which could be paired with nuclear warheads to deliver atomic weapons across the globe. 
1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis nearly led to war, after the USSR placed nuclear missiles in Cuba, in response to the US deployment of similar missiles in Turkey. In the chaos, Soviet officer Vasily Arkhipov may have prevented a nuclear war by casting a vote that prevented the launch of nuclear torpedoes from a B-59 submarine. The conflict de-escalated and the concept of mutually assured destruction took hold over the superpowers. Neither would launch a first strike since a retaliation by the other party would lead to the destruction of both nations. The US, UK, and Soviet Union signed the Limited Test Ban Treaty in 1963, which prohibited nuclear weapon tests in the atmosphere, underwater, or in space. In 1960, France tested its own fission bomb and developed a fusion weapon in 1968. China's first fission test was in 1964, and it transitioned to fusion weapons 32 months later in 1967. Israel likely built its first weapon in 1966 in cooperation with France. India tested its first nuclear device in 1974. And in response to its geopolitical rival, Pakistan completed its first nuclear test in 1998. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which advocated for the goal of worldwide nuclear disarmament, entered into force in 1970. The 1972 Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty was also signed by both the US and USSR to slow down the development of ballistic missile defenses. Any country that could successfully deter nuclear missiles can launch a first strike without reprisal, breaking the doctrine of mutually assured destruction. The 1980s saw both superpowers restart the arms race, as the number of nuclear weapons expanded and tensions grew. In 1983, a Soviet satellite mistakenly detected the launch of American nuclear missiles. The Soviet officer on duty, Stanislav Petrov, correctly identified the warning as an error and did not immediately alert his superiors. His actions may have prevented a war between the two countries. The breakup of the USSR in 1991 marked the end of the Cold War. Nuclear stockpiles were rapidly reduced in both the US and newly formed Russian Federation, decreasing the risk of a global nuclear conflict. In 2006, North Korea conducted a partially successful nuclear test and became the newest nation with nuclear weapons. Today, the Non-Proliferation Treaty counts 190 signatories as countries around the world agree upon reducing stockpiles. Nuclear weapons have the power to cause untold amounts of destruction. However, their existence may have also led to a period of peace. Regardless of whether you have a positive or negative view of nuclear weapons, they will remain a part of our world for decades to come. This means that understanding the history of mankind's deadliest technology is part of the human condition. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to drop a like or leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see everyone in the next video.